So what was what was it like? What was your experience like when you came to the United States for the first time? Like what what expectations did you have? What did you think you would have for an experience? And uh, what did it turn out to be? Well, um, hmm. I mean, before I officially moved here to the States, I had visited a couple of times. But then when I, I mean, that was vacation, you know, that was yeah. just coming to have fun for like two weeks and then go back. So really there was nothing, you know, crazy going on. Yeah. But when I moved here and I, like I had to start life, like living, being a part of that American fabric, it was challenging actually, <laughs> because one, um, a, a, a silly example, back home, because we were colonized by the British, um, cookies are called biscuits right okay. yeah but then in this country a biscuit is something different it is yeah you know, it's like yeah so you know I would go to the store and then I'll go like oh I'm trying to get like biscuits and then they'll look at me funny like wait what like biscuit are you trying to bake a biscuit I'm like no I'm trying to buy biscuits like <laughs> so <laughs> that was that was you know those are some of the few cultural differences um just the difference in speak um being from a british formerly colonized british space and then the americans having a different you know style and then um just how things work um, in this country um everything is efficient and mm. actually that yeah that gets crazy sometimes because you know if you miss your bus at two <laughs> you're mm -hmm. not going to make it on time for something so you have to make sure you are there at two to catch the bus so yeah things like that yeah it's interesting where, where else have you traveled to uh well i'm not as traveled so for me ghana exploring ghana because ghana is a big place I've been to Nigeria and then here. Yeah. So basically that's about it. Yeah, those are the areas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What what do you appreciate most about Ghanan culture? How do you say it? Ghan Ghanian? Ghanian. Ghanian culture. Yeah, Ghanian culture. Um, what do I appreciate about Ghanaian culture? Well, it's rich. I mean, Ghanaian culture is rich and has, it's, it's really the bedrock of a lot of things. So in this country, example, I'll see people who are, you know, graduating fresh from college, um, black Americans who would have like a shawl over their neck with the kente. That's, you know, they, some of them don't even realize where that fabric or, uh, you know, what it means to have the kente in there. So I look at them like, oh, that's the kente cloth was originated from my country. So I smile at that. And sometimes I try and educate some of them who don't know this. Um, just being, you know, I'm just proud that Ghana is a bedrock for a lot of things like Afro beats mm -hmm. and um, the fact that, um, you know, high life is the bedrock for Afro beats. And even for Afro beat without an S, which, uh, you know, uh, Fela Kuti is the proponent for, he was in Ghana a lot of the times um, during the 60s and 70s, just, you okay. know, learning from Ghana, picking those sounds and then developing the Afro beat, which, you know, he's very much known for. So just my country being a bedrock for so many things and, you know, so much learning for other people from, you know, within the West African region and other African countries. Yes. Okay, name some of the uh, Afro beat artists. Afrobeat um, artists, eh, Brenner Boy, you know, um, is a he won the Grammy recently, and then there's a uh, Whiskey who is on tour right now, you know, breaking bounds. He sold out the O2 Arena in London. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> he sold out three times in the space of a month <laughs> so that's something <laughs> wow yeah and then um that was with kid and then there's davido who had one of the biggest songs i, I think three years ago um okay. titled if 
um, one of the biggest to me, most of the radio stations in the urban areas in here in the United States were playing his song. And that was the first for an African artist. So these are the proponents for Afro beats as we speak now. So if you hear Afro beats, there's one usually with an S that's like the new age. And then the okay. Afro beat without the S is from the 60s, 70s, where you know, Felakuti was a proponent for, he's usually known for that. Yeah. What kind of music do you listen to? Eh, I would say I listen to all kinds of music. So pop music. Um, I love listening to Ariana Grande and Bruno Mars. Okay. These are yeah, my are two good. favorites. Yeah. <laughs> Here in the States. Um, I'll listen to Dua Lupa, who is European, but, you know, mm. she's also big in the state Adele um, back on the continent. Um, there's so many artists on the continent that I would listen to. Uh, let me see. There's Casper Nuvest from South Africa. There's Mikasa from South Africa. For Ghana, I would listen to Reggie Rockstone. He's like the grandfather of hip life. Um, there are a couple of new artists like there's, uh, who else? so many artists i'm trying to remember right now. what what, it, what are the uh three artists that you're listening to a lot lately on your spotify i imagine do you uh, spotify yes sometimes i do yeah sometimes i listen to music on youtube music as well oh, okay um yeah the artists i'm listening to currently heavy on rotation yeah, yeah heavy rotation yeah, Oxlade. Oxlade is he's a Nigerian Afro R and B artist. O X L A D E. Um, then there's Reynolds the Gentleman. Yeah, Reynolds the Gentleman. It's um, he is also an Afro R and B artist from Ghana. Um, okay. He has a new project out, and I've been listening to it over and over and over. And then. I have been listening to a lot of ama piano music from South Africa. So Casper okay. Nuvest, um, who is a South African rapper, but is trying to venture into that ama piano scene. And then other ama piano artists, Jules, um, he's a Ghanaian British guy. He, I'm excited for his new album out. He has beautiful music. He blends sounds from all over the continent and it makes for beautiful sounds. Juice is J-U-L-S. Okay, so you mentioned like the continent. Like, yeah. Now, with, so Africa is a very large landmass and continent, yeah, right? So Ghana is just a small part of that. Do you mm -hmm. feel or does Ghana feel connected to the rest of the continent, even though the cultures are so different and everybody's off on their own, you know? That's a good question. Um, every, everybody, you know, because Ghana, historically, because Ghana was the first country um, in Sub-Saharan Africa to gain independence, everyone recognizes Ghana as you know that country you know that oh. you know yes the home of Kwame Nkrumah who was you know almost like the godfather of pan-africanism so everybody knows Ghana on the continent and during you know the period where Africa was trying to gain independence from its colonial powers Nkrumah did a lot to try and help with that you know process so how, how do you spell his name Kwame Nkrumah, K-W-A-M-E, my first name. <laughs> and then Nkrumah, the last name is N-K-R-U-M-A-H. Okay. Yes, yeah, so because of the, the sig significant role Kwame Nkrumah played on the continent, everyone gives Ghana its flowers as that country that we all respect. So they call it the Black Star of Africa, you know. Mm. So yes, on, on that note, other countries, you know, give us that respect. But um, in modern times, Ghana being connected to the rest of Africa, I wouldn't say so as much. Um, on the Western front, so West African coast, the ECOWAS mm -hmm. block, 
Yes, definitely Ghana is, you know, is in tune with a lot of the African countries on that West African coast. But for Ghana and the rest of Africa, talking about Northern Africa, Eastern Africa, and the Southern Africa, I think there's more work to be done when it comes to that, especially with the role we played historically. I think we can do a better job with trying to, you know, become like in tune with the rest of the continent.